Well, here's a video I've been putting off for quite a while. This is our new 2021 Mazda CX-30. And uh, we bought this back in October to be my wife's new daily driver. And all this time she's been driving it and I haven't really made a video on it yet. I made a comparison between this and the Crosstrek, but that's really about it. So let's get into it and let's talk about what it's been like to own this Mazda CX-30 for the last few months. We'll talk about just why we bought this particular spec. This is a front wheel drive premium. Uh, kind of hard to find front wheel drive CX-30s for some reason. Uh, I guess understandably so here in Michigan, everyone wants all wheel drive for winter driving and all that. But I say all you need is a good set of Blizzax off of Facebook Marketplace and you are good to go. This being the premium, you get these brown leather accents on the interior, this neat little dark stitching. I think it looks a little bit better. We were holding off on buying the premium for the 2020 model year because I didn't like the fact that it had cylinder deactivation. Well, guess what? For 21, they got rid of cylinder deactivation in the premium model. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get this. I think this is the car for us. And uh, honestly, this was mostly my wife's decision because this is pretty much the only car she liked out of anything we drove in 2020. So uh, this is her car. It's been very nice to drive. Uh, she absolutely loves it. I quite like it as well. For some reason, it kind of reminds me of my old GTI. It's fun to drive. It's very comfortable. It has a fantastic sound system. It is just a nice all-rounder, a really good daily driver. I think it looks sharp too. Definitely wanted to get it in this gray. This is kind of, I think, the best color in the new CX-30. Of course, this being the premium, it has 18-inch wheels. And uh, let's start it up. I'll show you guys what it looks like on the inside. And it has the Bose sound system, which was a necessity with this CX-30. So top tip with CX-30 ownership, you may have remembered from our previous videos that the startup chime happens about seven times when you start up the engine. If you put your seatbelt on first, that doesn't happen. So everything here is pretty much similar. We did do a full review on the CX-30. This is basically just a lifted Mazda 3. And uh, I love the interior, I love the design, the aesthetic of this car is awesome. And we're actually getting in a CX-30 Turbo this week. So stay tuned for a full review of that. Of course, that's gonna have a few differences. It's gonna have the turbocharged 250 horsepower engine. It's gonna be all wheel drive. It'll have a heated steering wheel, a few other little features sprinkled throughout. This CX-30 was about 28 grand out the door. We got some Mazda discounts and other things applied. Uh, so I think you could very easily get into one of these under 30 grand, uh, which is a pretty good deal. We bought the front wheel drive for a few reasons. Uh, my wife Charlotte didn't really care either way. Front wheel drive, all wheel drive didn't really make much of a difference to her. And I've always been of the opinion that for a long term, ownership proposition, mechanically simpler and lighter and just less complicated is the way to go. So this is a car that we plan on owning for a very long time. So a few really important differences between this and the all-wheel drive. This has a 13.5 gallon fuel tank, which is still very small, versus the all-wheel drive car's 12.7 gallon fuel tank. So that means this gets about 300, 320 miles to the tank, whereas the all-wheel drive is 280 miles to a tank or lower. And I just don't think that's enough range in a daily driver with a car that you're commuting in and putting, you know, 50, 60 miles on a day. Also, this gets better fuel economy. This is about 28 miles to the gallon combined, and our, uh, our real-world experience has kind of verified that. All-wheel drive, you're going to be getting around 26 miles to the gallon combined. Like I said earlier, this is $1,400 cheaper, and uh, it's about 154 pounds lighter than the all-wheel drive car. They mostly drive about the same. Uh, in my experience, I've found that front-wheel drive Mazas are a little bit more nimble, and they feel a little bit lighter, and maybe there's a slight difference between this and the all-wheel drive. But all said, uh, this is pretty much the same driving experience here. There's nothing too different. Unfortunately for the 21 model year, 
The Bose sound system is only available in the premium Mazda CX-30. So you have to get the top trim. You can't get the, uh, the preferred package and the Bose doesn't come in the select. It's premium only. So a pretty compelling reason to swing for this top trim. But I think for the CX-30, for what you're getting, this is actually a really good deal and probably the best bang for the buck. Really the only thing I think this car is missing is a heated steering wheel. That would be nice. But these two vents are positioned so close to the steering wheel that in the winter, it's almost like you do have a heated steering wheel. You can just aim them right at your hands and you're perfectly warm. So this has been a fantastic winter car uh, for her and for me and for just using. We did take this to crown rust control in the beginning of the winter and uh, it's held up great. We'll do an underbody video and kind of show you guys how it's held up over about how many miles this have on it. This has 5,600 miles. We took it to Crown at about 800 miles, so it was pretty early in the ownership experience. And uh, see how it's held up over the winter. Usually, even new cars will see some surface rust in their first season, and uh, this is perfectly clean underneath, which is awesome. I did pick up a set of Blizzaks just online via Facebook Marketplace. They've served really well in winter driving. In front wheel drive form, this is a great car in the snow. It has tons of ground clearance. I believe it's 8.2 inches of ground clearance or somewhere around there. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it's, it's over eight inches, which is great. And uh, that's actually pretty close to what my Lexus GX was. So I figure as long as you have a good amount of ground clearance, you don't really need that all wheel drive as much as long as you're not pushing snow ahead of you. We really wanted an electric car or a hybrid uh, as this next new car purchase. But honestly, this CX-30 just kind of made the most sense. Uh, and we're pretty limited in our garage space in our house. So this was actually one of the few cars that fit very well in our garage space. And that was another deciding factor to get this. So complaints. Um, some of them are just drivability. So uh, this is not the best transmission this, this is not the best six-speed automatic for Mazda. It's pretty darn good. It does a very nice job in the uh, realm of six-speeds and for vehicles in this class. But I found it to be just a little bit too eager to uh, downshift. The power, however, is very good. It's a little bit peakier, not as torquey as you would expect. But um, I do find it hunting gears just a little bit more, not holding that gear as well as like the CX-5 does, for example. My other complaint that I noticed immediately when getting in this car is just the brakes. They feel weak. There's not a lot of power or bite to the pads. And I feel like you have to give the brake pedal just a little bit of an extra push than you would in a lot of other modern vehicles. Um, when we first got this car, they took a little while to brake in. When the brakes are wet, uh, the stopping distance has decreased quite a bit until you kind of get you know, get a fresh, uh, dry surface on the rotor. So one thing I will do on this CX-30 eventually is just swap out some better pads. I do not like these OEM stock brake pads that come on this car from the factory. Pretty easy to do, but still just kind of a, an initial complaint that I noticed immediately. You have to get pretty hard onto the pedal to get a lot of braking force out of it. One thing I like, so if you compare that engine sound to the CX-30 that we drove in 2020, I think they got rid of some artificial noise. This is a lot quieter and less fake sounding than uh, the CX-30 I drove last year, which I find to be kind of interesting. Love the dynamics of this. It is fun. It does feel like a hatchback. I feel like this is a small car underneath me. The paddle shifters are super responsive. I have a good amount of steering feel. This is an enjoyable and engaging car to drive. Again, kind of reminds me of my GTI. Not as fast, doesn't have a manual transmission, but it is 
I think, a good enthusiast choice in this class. And another thing, just kind of an observation as we have owned this car and as I've tested other vehicles, nothing in this class, in this subcompact, crossover, lifted hatchback, whatever you want to call it, class, even comes close to the level of interior quality and fit and feel. Mazda is doing this luxury, just budget luxury thing right now, and I think they are killing it in terms of what the competition is offering. I think the CX-30 really punches above its weight in its class, and you know, you get into a Mercedes GLA, for example, and that's kind of the point where you start to feel like, oh, okay, maybe we're kind of in the same uh, realm as far as interior quality and materials. But that's a GLA. That was a $50,000 car that we had a few weeks ago. Of course, it had a few options on it, but pretty impressive to be able to say that uh, in a car that's around, you know, starting price around twenty four, twenty three thousand dollars $23,000. Do a little zero to 60 here. Around 180 horsepower, actually pretty quick, comparatively. While we're on the highway here, we'll talk about radar cruise control, all that stuff. I don't have the uh, lane keep assist or anything enabled in this because I just think it's annoying, but the radar cruise always seems to be enabled. Even after you turn it off, you restart the car, it seems to come back on. Um, and it's been kind of finicky with saving settings. Uh, I had to work quite a bit to get the seat position to sync up to our key, but you just have to kind of read the user manu manual and follow the instructions. And of course, you can only sit, set your seating position one and two when a car's in park. And uh, that also relates to the position of the head-up display. So, you know, there's a lot of settings that you can kind of customize and set to your individual preference. So getting back to radar guided cruise control, it's an okay system. It works well enough. Um, the cruise control buttons, the ergonomics are really nice. This is super easy to use. You can change following distances super easily. I love the information that it shows you in the head-up display, which is your blind spot. Uh, we have this set to be super dark. You can change that in the settings, but it is difficult to see the head-up display with sunglasses on. Actually, it's almost impossible. So I, that's pretty common. Most car manufacturers haven't figured that out yet for some reason. We're going to be putting this back on the OEM tires here soon. Um, not super excited. This has 18s. Tires are more expensive. The wheels are bigger. The sidewalls are smaller. Not as pothole friendly. But there's still quite a bit of sidewall on the CX-30. Haven't had any issues as of yet. And another thing about this car is just the fact that in a sea of a lot of overly complicated modern vehicles, this is just, it's simple. You have climate control buttons. This infotainment, once you get to use it and learn it, is very easy and just intuitive to use. Um, everything is simplified here. There's not a lot of complexity mechanically and from a tech technical standpoint with this Mazda CX-30. And I do really like that about this car. The ride quality is pretty good too. It's not as cushy as the Crosstrek or something like that, but uh, I think it strikes a really nice ride handling balance. You do have to keep an eye on your tire pressures. You overinflate your tires a little bit too much and uh, the ride deteriorates pretty quickly. So it's pretty sensitive to small changes like that. But if you've got your pressure set at the placard PSI, I think around 35 PSI or thereabouts, the ride quality is great. It's a little bit, you know, it's on the firmer side. It feels a little bit sportier, but uh, definitely not punishing or harsh or even really distracting on a daily basis. Uh, top marks for the CX-30, I think, uh, you know, really putting our money where our mouth is kind of speaks uh, for how we feel about it. We discussed buying a bunch of different cars. We 
maybe he also wanted to get a RAV4 Prime. That was pretty high, heavy on the list. Uh, for a little while, I was looking at a Toyota Corolla hatchback, an XSE or something with a, with a CVT. Uh, another fun little car. But we needed something that was a little bit smaller that would fit well in the garage. The CX-5 was fine, but really when it came down to it, the CX-30 was where uh, my wife's heart lay. And usually she's not passionate about anything car related. So the fact that she loved this um, was the deciding factor. All right, guys. Well, that'll be it for this one. Very excited to test out the CX-30 Turbo later this week. We'll give you guys a full review on that, maybe a little bit of a comparison between these two cars, but honestly, I don't think they're going to be that different aside from the power and the all-wheel drive and the price tag. So uh, really, though, you kind of can't go wrong with whatever you want in your CX-30 flavor. I would, however, highly recommend the premium package now that it doesn't have cylinder deactivation, and uh, just for that Bose sound system alone, it is very well worth it. We'll give you guys one more walk around of the CX-30 and uh, and then we'll go and just do a little sound system test with this Bose Premium Audio. Good headlights in this car too. Yeah, it's a stylish little package. I like the way it looks. We'll go into our sound system test playlist. Having all the controls down here, so easy. You guys have heard me talk about Mazdas in the past. The ergonomics, everything, the quick access is just great. say enough good things about this Bose premium audio. It is definitely class leading and I think it's one of the best Bose sound systems I've heard in any vehicle. Bose is kind of hit and miss with in-car audio and this is just, it's awesome. It's very, very good. Makes me feel a lot better about getting rid of the GX460 with the Mark Levinson. guys that's it for this one thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video take care